just the Living Word uh, Fellowship Church National Day of Prayer. This is a National Day of Prayer for the whole country, and these are taking place all over this great land in which we live. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, we've been talking about the fear of God. I'm not going to keep you here very long today because we've got some other thing. Oh, yeah, the, I promise today, Mike, you'll be out by 2.30, okay? <laughs> but anyhow, uh, here's why I say we've lost the fear of God. There was a man, years ago, was probably one of the best pitchers, left-handed pitchers for the Los Angeles Dodgers. His name was Sandy Koufax. Those of you who are about yeah. 50 years old, 50 and above, you remember Sandy Koufax. Yeah. Sandy Koufax would not pitch on the Sabbath. He was Jewish, he would not pitch on the Sabbath. He said, my faith precludes or is ahead of what the demands of Los Angeles Dodgers were making on him. He said, I will not pitch on the Sabbath. So he said, if you schedule me to pitch on the Sabbath, you're going to have a left-hander that's not here because I will not pitch on the Sabbath day. You can go by any sports facility around McComb County, Oakland County, Wayne County, St. Clair County, around Michigan, the 50 states in our union, and go all the way around all of those, and on Sunday, guess what's taking place at 11 o'clock and around? Baseball, Baseball football, volleyball, soccer, and everything else. Now, do you know why Tiger baseball games and other sports venues are usually at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock, Eastern Standard Time, and different uh, mountain time and all of that? Because most teams had their own ball team, and they said years ago, we will not have ball games that are played during church hours. That's why most of the games are at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and things like that. We've lost that in the United States of America. Yeah. We've lost that we can do anything at any time, and that's why kids are getting a mixed message. We're saying that God is number one in our life, but you know what really is number one? Sports, Sports. are number one in their life. And I love sports. Yes. Nobody likes sports anymore than I do. I love sports. I was on a lot of ball teams and all that. But God comes number one in my life. I had a wonderful mother-in-law that told me the one time I was uh, had my baseball uniform on and I went to the hospital. And she said, you know, uh, Johnny's going to get operated on. I said, yeah, I know. I just prayed with her. It'll be all right. I'm on my way to play a softball team. She said, I'm going to see you out the hall. <laughs> She said, number one in your life is God, but number two is your wife, and you need to be here. Amen. Wow. You have a mother-in-law that will slap you like that with words? You don't have a chance. I said, but you don't understand. There's people waiting for me to play ball. And she said, you don't understand that your wife comes before your stinking ball team. So I went and played ball, because I wasn't going to let my mother-in-law tell me what to do, okay? <laughs> And I was miserable all the time I played. <laughs> miserable. Well, the fact of the matter is, she was right and I was wrong. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is, we have lost the fear of God. What is the fear of God? I'm glad you asked. It means this. Reverence, to revere, to stand in awe of a supreme being, because you know how powerful he is. That he sees all, knows all, hears all, and there's nothing that you and I can say, do, or even think about that he doesn't know all about it. Amen? The fear of God will cause you to talk differently. It will cause you to do good. And it will cause you to seek peace and pursue it. And you know why? Because, again, you understand God knows all about you. The fear of God will cause a person to stop sinning. Remember, we looked at that the second week. They came to this mountain and they said, we want to hear from God. God's okay, I'll show up in the mountain quake, and there was fire on the mountain and everything else. He says, hey, Moses, we changed our mind. You go talk to him, and we'll wait over here. <laughs> the fear of God will cause you to say, you know what? I'm no, in no position to argue with God who is number one and who is the boss. Look at the person next to you and say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Not, not NASCAR, not baseball, football volleyball, track, none of those things come before him. Amen? And listen, if you're a, one of the superstars on your team, you need to tell your coach, hey, listen, I go to church on Sunday morning, you'll have to play this game without me. Watch and see if you won't reschedule some games. If you're all of that in a bag of chips, too, to use my sister's words. Okay? You might find out they can get by without you. Amen? The 
fear of God will cause you to look at life a whole lot different. I want you to take and turn in your Bibles very quickly to this passage of Scripture. Sometimes we have to obey God rather than our president or our king. That's right. How many of you understand that? The Bible says in Acts chapter 5 and verse 29, we ought to obey God rather than men. Right. Everyone's so afraid of saying something to somebody because it'll offend them. There's only one person I don't want to offend, and it's not just my wife. That's the only person. But the only being I don't want to offend is the King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus Christ. Amen? Who well, I'm going to have to give an account before him someday. Amen? Well, there's this story that is found in 1 Kings chapter 18. You don't hear too much about it because it has the fear of God in it. And people don't like to hear about the fear of God anymore, but it needs to be in our society because we need to stand up and say, even, by the way, I missed ballets. I missed dance. I missed a lot of other things that are taking place during church service, and that is ballet and recitals and everything else. That would still come out under the auspices of it's not the right time. Right. You ought to say to your children, listen, you know, if you're involved in ballet or any of that and it's at 11 o'clock, then guess what? You won't be able to do it this year because we put God first in our life. See, we're sending mixed messages. How many of you understand that? We're sending mixed messages. We're saying he's number one, but then when the choice, when the rubber meets the road, we say, oh, he's not number one. He's number two or three or four. It's far down in the line. But he's, you need to have him in your life of where he's real convenient for you. You know when he's real convenient for America is when the bombs start falling. Yes, that's right. Then he's real convenient. Yep. Listen, that's not how he wants to be. Yep. He wants us to make him Lord of our life and to fear him every day of our life. Amen? So here we are, 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 3. And Ahab called Obadiah. Ahab was the king of Israel. Obadiah was the governor of his house. Now, Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. Everybody say, feared the Lord greatly. Feared the Lord greatly. And it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. Uh, Jezebel was Ahab's wife. And Obadiah didn't tell him what he was doing. He just went and hid these fifty. Everybody say, he's hiding them from the king. He's hiding now, Ahab thinks Obadiah is sold out to him. Guess who Obadiah is really sold out to? God. To God. Mm -hmm. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land, unto all fountains of water, and unto all brooks. Peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and he fell on his face and said, Art thou that my lord Elijah? Did you notice where he, the position that he took? He's a commander of the army, and what does he do? He hits his knees. And he answered him, I am. Go tell the Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And he said, what, uh, would, uh, what have I sinned that thou wouldst deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me? As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. And when they said he is not here, they, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not. And now thou sayest, go tell my Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and it shall come to pass as soon as I am gone, from here, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whither I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. Underline that. Mm -hmm. From the time he was knee high to a grasshopper, he feared God. He had heard that the Spirit of God coming upon individuals could, could cause them to do great things. And he said, listen, I feared you from my youth. I feared God from my youth. I'm not going to break God's heart and do the wrong thing here. Please don't leave. If I go and tell the king you're here and you're not here, he's going to kill me. And I love you. I don't want to, I love God. I don't want to do this. He said, you, you just do what I tell you here, and it's going to work out all right. In the United States of America, there comes a time where we have to stand up yes. and say, I fear God. I fear God. From I've been here 30 years, and I have I can tell you every excuse people have for not coming to church. 
on Sunday. You know what most of them boil down to? The kids have something going on on that day. Let me say this again. You need to have a backbone, not a wishbone, right. as parents. You need to say to the coaches, you need to say to the ones who are in charge, listen, my son and my daughter are not going to do that at this time. You want to play that game? Then you play it without my son or daughter. Oh, pastor, my kids will miss out on so much. Listen, one other parent will watch you, and another parent will watch you. I was a little league coach myself years ago. It's hard to believe that, uh, but I was. And I had different coaches work for me. And we had this one coach that uh, Steve Linton, and Steve started, when I made a stand, Steve made a stand. When I made a stand and Steve made a stand, another man made a stand. And we said, oh, our games are going to be at such and such a time. And that's when our games were. Until you stand up, you won't know how many people will stand up with you. Hmm. Stop going with the flow. Look at the person next to you and say, hey, you got us wonder. Cut that out, okay? Yes. <laughs> Cut that kind of stuff out. It's not going to help you in the long run, amen? Well, let's see what the fear of God will do. I want you to just write these down very quickly. The fear of God will keep you from intentionally making life difficult for another human being. It will cause you to stop doing that. That is found over in Leviticus 25, verse 17. The fear of God will cause you to avoid temptation. Take a turn with me to Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 7. I'm just going to run through there just very quickly. And you'll see why I say we've lost that in our society. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. In that same chapter, if you'll go to verses 20 through 29, read them when you get home. I'm just going to give you the references. It talks about how the fear of God, a person was looking at the things that were going on in society, and he was looking at the woman that were, women that were trying to lure these guys into uh, lifestyles and doing things that were wrong. And they said, no, 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 I'm not going to do that because I fear God. The fear of God will promote health. They can turn to Proverbs 3, 7 through 8. You know why we have a, a nation of obesity? Because we don't fear God. Our bodies are what? <laughs> Temples of the Holy Ghost which we have of God and we are what? Not our own. Everybody say, not my own. Not my own. But we are bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I cannot live my life any way I want because I fear God. Yeah. I have to say, Lord, what do you want me to do with my life? I can't just lay around and say, well, you know what? It doesn't matter. It does matter. I'm only going to be here so long and I have to use as much time as God gives me to bring as many people into the kingdom of God as he would have me bring. How many of you understand that? Amen. And I don't need to, to tax myself so I check out of here 15, 20, 30 years earlier because I didn't take care of my body. Our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and the fear of the Lord will cause you to do that. The fear of the Lord will cause you to hate arrogance, pride, and evil. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. You see someone who's cocky, guess what? God has a way of bringing them down. I, I, when I see a guy who's cocky, I say, oh Lord, help him come down real quick. I saw Alex Rodriguez the other day. He hit a 660 home run and everybody started booing him started booing him. They interviewed him afterwards. He was standing out on the field and he was crying. Great big guy. You saw Michael Lynch. He was crying. He was crying because where people should have been giving him accolades, they said, you cheated to get where you are. Yeah. People don't like cheaters. Nope. They want you to do it the right way. Willie Mays was 185 pounds, hit 639 home runs, 659 home runs. He did it the right way. Hank Aaron hit over 714 home runs. He did it the right way. Babe Ruth didn't hit 714 home runs. He did it the right way. Barry Bonds came along and hit almost 800 home runs. And guess what? They want to strike his records from the books. Why? Because he did it the wrong way. The fear of God will keep you from doing things the wrong way. Are you with me this morning? The fear of God will make you a confident person and thus bless your children. Proverbs 14, 26. Our 
children want to be able to look up to us and see us as Superman. Strange visitor from another planet. <laughs> Came to earth with powers and abilities far above those of mortal men. My dad can beat your dad. I remember my kids saying that one time, then I looked at these, some of these kids' fathers and I said, you might want to keep that to yourself, <laughs> amen? <laughs> Verse 26 is, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and your children will have a place of refuge. Listen, have the fear of the Lord in your life, and your children will have a place. Listen, they ought to be able to see you pray. Yep. Your children ought to watch you. How do you talk? I was watching television the other day, and the F-bomb must have came out. I'm, I don't know how many times I whipped it out. And I thought, listen, that's how homes in the United States of America, parents ought to say, have the fear of God enough to say, we turn that off in our house. We're not watching right. garbage. Right. Now, you're not watching garbage either. You're in my house. We're not watching garbage. God is watching us. Proverbs 14, 27 says, the fear of the Lord will promote life. How many of you want life? Good life. Enjoy it. You know, I was golfing the other day with Pastor Jim Turner. And uh, two other guys, they said, you know, you really just love life. I do love life. Yeah. I do love life. I, I love everything about it. I love watching kids pedal on a bike. Mm -hmm. I, watch, I love watching people going down the road with their boats and going fishing. I love that. Just don't do it on Sunday morning. Amen? <laughs> I love watching people enjoy life, walking hand in hand with their wife, and walking with their grandkids. I love doing that. I love seeing families come into restaurants together. That's what God loves. Mm -hmm. The Bible says he places the lonely in families. I love seeing families coming together. I love life. The fear of the Lord will cause you to stop doing wrong. Proverbs 16 says, By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men stop sinning. Men depart from evil. They don't do it anymore. They don't cheat people anymore. I have a hard time selling cars. Years ago, I didn't have quite as hard a time, but I do now. Tony, you know what I'm talking about, right? I got to tell everybody what's wrong with the car. That's not how they usually sell a car. You usually tell everybody what's right with the car. They'll find out what's wrong, amen? <laughs> but the fear of the Lord will cause you not to do that. Do you know why? Because we're going to have to give an account to them to God someday. Romans 14 and verse 12. The Bible says each and every one of us will give an account of ourselves. God's not going to ask me about what you did. He's going to ask me about what I did with my time on this earth. Amen? Mm -hmm. Proverbs 22, 4. The fear of the Lord and humility will bless you financially. How many of you want to be blessed financially? Amen. Now the rest of you are lying, okay? <laughs> You know you want some extra money in your pocket, okay? Amen. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. My boss, Clarence Ryan, heard years ago, I was lamenting the fact that I only made X amount of money. And I said, I can't make any more money because I'm in a union shop. And they only pay X amount of money for guys who are on the line. Tony, you know what I'm talking about, right? But my boss saw that I could catch on to stuff real quick like that. They'd give me a job and catch on to he said, no more, I want you to come into my office after work. So I came into the office. He said, I want you to learn every job on the line. And he said, I'm going to give you more money than the other guys on the line. But don't tell nobody on the line. Now, I'm saying what? I want to tell everybody. He said, don't tell nobody. So they would pass out the check. And you know what you guys should do? How much did you get? How much did you get? How much did you get? I had to go like this for all the years. The last eight, nine years I was at Christ, I would have to zip my lip and say, that's my business. I didn't ask you your business, so you don't get to know my business. Listen, don't tell me what God can't do. God can bless you financially if you have the fear of the Lord in you. Amen? Look at the person next to you and say, God can get it to you. Don't worry about how. He can get it to you. Amen? Yep. Absolutely. Have a good friend, Don Dreyer. Ron Blanche, you know him. His, his uh, grandmother said, Don, I want you up in, the, up in the UP by such and such a time tomorrow. Don jumped in his ragged 73 Dodge van, drove all the way up to the UP, 
with his wife. And she said, Donald, give me a dollar. He said, Grandma, you don't need a dollar. Give me a dollar, Donald. Stop arguing with your grandmother. So he handed her a dollar. She tossed him the keys to her Cadillac. She said, I'm never going to be driving any more than cars yours. Oh, wow. Look at the person next to you and say, oh, I'd love something like that. <laughs> the fear of the Lord will get that to you, amen? It will get that to you, but you have to have the, the fear of the Lord. If you don't have that, if you keep putting God all the way down, he started at number one in your life, but now he's relegated all the way down to six or seven, you don't have the fear of the Lord in you. He still has to be right here. Are you with me? That's why I say our country has lost the fear of the Lord. Let's take a turn to Jeremiah 23, 24. I'm almost done, Michael. I know. I'm going to let you know I'm going to be right on time. Because I serve a right on time God. Amen? Amen. I did tell Pastor Todd we're beating the congregationalists down to the restaurant this morning, though. I did tell him that. <laughs> Jeremiah 23, 24. Can any man hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? What's the answer? No. You mean in a bar with all the lights turned out? He still sees you. You mean with all the, the lights going around and around and the wheels on the bus go round and round in a bar? That he won't see you there? How about on a back road with all the lights out late at night? Happy to see you. Will he see you there? Absolutely. How about with all the lights turned out in the house? Will he see you there? Yes. Any place, look at the person next to say, any place God sees you, is he happy about what he's seeing? Oh, boy. <laughs> Can any man hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord. Amen. Take a turn with me to Psalm 33, verses 13 through 18. Oh, but pastor, you mean there's no place? That's right. Read Psalm 139. You can't get away from God. No place, no how, no way. You say, I'm going to get south. God won't see that. Yes, he will. You just don't want to understand what happened after you got south. Amen. In fact, there's a scripture that says after you get south, You'll look at an ugly woman and think she was beautiful. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's the Bible teaches that. You'll wake up in the morning and say, how did this happen to me? I can tell you how it happened. Okay, so after church. <laughs> I used to hang around with the guys and they would say, hey, brother, I asked these girls to come home. I said, here's how this is going to go. You asked them, you're taking them up to the front door. I'm not going up to the front door with them, okay? I got standards, okay? That's how it's going to be. Psalm 33, 13 through 18. The Lord looks from heaven. Everybody say, looks from heaven. He beholds all the sons of men. Circle the word all. And daughters, by the way. From the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth their hearts alike. He considers all their works. In other words, he sees what we're doing. There is no king saved by the multitude of a host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. A horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. Wow. That's why the fear of God is so important. If your children have it, they have confidence. If they don't have it, they don't have confidence. If you don't sow it in your children, they're not going to have it. My, my mother, my brothers, some of my brothers, some of my sisters are here this morning, they'll tell you, every time we would go someplace, my mother, the very first thing, the very last thing that would come out of her mouth before we went out the door is, I may not see you, and your father may not see you, but God sees everything you do. Oh my. Mom, we were doing real well, <laughs> We were doing real well. You know what she was putting in us? The fear of God. Come home from school and you turn in your report card. Was that the and you know, A B, you know, you got A's or B's and was that the best you could do? I mean, I'm asking you, if God is my witness, is that the best you could do? Now how do you answer that one? I could have cheated a little bit better, I guess, you know. The <laughs> no. fact of the matter is, a lot of times, it's not the best we can do. 
But if the fear of God is in you, guess what you do? You're going to do the very I'm best. I'm going to give my very best. Amen? Amen. Very best. So, the fear of God. Do you have it in your home? Do you have it in your individual life? Do you have it in, on the job? Do you have it in your dealings with people out in the streets? Do you have it as a leader? Do you have it? One sidebar before, uh, when my boss gave me that job, he asked me to go down to this one department and steal this one thing. It was something we needed in our department. And I said, boss, you know I ain't going to do that. He says, well, you're not, I said, I'm not going to do it. Now, you know, he didn't say I'm going to take your job away from you. You know what he said? Hey, so and so, I want you to go get this for me. What all get? And they did. But the fear of God cost me a good job too one time. When this church started in 1985, I was putting in six days, 10, 12 hours a day all the time, and my boss came up, Chuck, and he says, Warren, he's not going to have you work seven days a week. 10, 12 hours a day. He says, You'll be here at Chrysler. That was a, a brand new Chrysler paint plant started in 1985. He said, I need you to come in here and help set up lines. And I says, uh, I'm giving you six days, 10 and 12. He says, but I need the seven. I said, you need to find a different guy then. And they picked a guy named Johnny Lightning. Johnny Lightning started driving the, the Chrysler Conquest. Some of you remember the Conquest. Mm -hmm. That was a fast car at that time. And every time that yellow Conquest would pull in the parking lot, I would think, oh, God. Why can't I drive a price of conflict? <laughs> Do you know why? Because I had made a decision. I was going to put God first. Yes, amen. And this church started in 1985. I have not been shorted one iota. To see all the lives change, that God has richly blessed yes. Joni and I. He really has. The National Day of Prayer is right around the corner. I'm going to ask at this time if we could play that DVD. And then I'm going to ask those who have... I've asked to pray this morning if you would come at this time.